Welcome, gentle listener. I am Baldemut, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the factions, forces, and formations of the Warhammer 40k universe, the grim darkness of the far future, where there is no time for peace. There is only time for war. And today, as it is Monday, another wee biscuit of lore, while I work on some of my bigger projects. I am sorry it's taking so long, but sometimes you can't rush things. And so, as usual, for the very basics, let us lean on existing wisdom. To quote, The Emperor's Spears The Emperor's Spears is a Loyalist Space Marine chapter and successor of the Ultramarines. The chapter was created during the 25th founding. In the latter half of the 40th millennium, the so-called Bastion founding, the Emperor's Spears hail from the feral ocean world of Nemeton and were once one of the three chapters, including the Celestial Lions and the Star Scorpions, that once made up the Adeptus Valeri, better known as the Sentinels of the Veil. These Astartes Guardians once stood watch over the Imperial worlds located in the backwater region of the galaxy, called Ilara's Vale. Chapter History While records of the origins of the Emperor's Spears are scarce, the first recorded encounter with the chapter came in year 594, millennium 40, suggesting that they had been defending the Imperium for perhaps a millennium and a half, making them relatively young by the standards of Space Marine chapters. Upon their inception, they were charged with standing sentinel over the scattered worlds of Ilaria's Vale region of Ultima Sanctum, ever watchful for insurrection and rebellion, as well as external threats. This backwater sector of the galaxy was once protected by the Oath of Unity, sworn by three mighty chapters of the Adeptus Astartes. The Star Scorpions, who were undone by flaws in their genetic coding, the Celestial Lions, who were ravaged by the Inquisition for sins they did not commit, and the Emperor's Spears. Now, after hundreds of standard years, the Emperor's Spears still keep their vigil. They are barbarian watchmen against the Outer Dark, bloodied but unbroken in their long duty. Even in their relatively short history, the Emperor's Spears have clashed with their fellow Space Marines, notably the Aurora chapter, during the Ukari insurrection. It is only in recent years that High King Arukatas, the sword-bearer, has erased the tensions that ensued between the chapter and the other descendants of the 13th Legion of old. No records exist of the Emperor Spears and Aurora chapter fighting alongside one another in the seven centuries since. Due to the opening of the Great Rift, the Emperor Spears have been beset by many new dangers. The rift is visible from Nemeton, and its baleful influence has been felt across the Alaria's Vale region. Hard pressed by constant war and isolation following the loss of their fellow chapters, the Emperor Spears now stand upon the brink of destruction and it remains to be seen how its future will unfold. Notable Campaigns Yukari Insurrection Year 330, Millennium 41 The Imperial world of Yukari was struck by a rebellion led by the forces of Chaos in the year 330, Millennium 41. In response, its planetary governor sent an astropathic plea for aid. As Yukari lay within the region of Elaria's Vale, it was within the sphere of responsibility of the Emperor's Spears. The chapter dispatched a strike force led by Captain Tristans to aid the world. When the Emperor's Spears force arrived, Tristans discovered that the Aurora chapter was already fighting the rebels. The Aurora chapter commander berated the Emperor's Spears upon their arrival for failing in their responsibilities to guard the Vale and requiring others to fight their wars for them. This angered Tristans, and he ordered the Emperor Spears strike force to deploy right into the heart of the rebels' capital city. Though they suffered heavy casualties, over three solar days of fighting, the Spears killed the rebel Chaos Lord and thus earned the majority of the glory of the battle for themselves. Tristans then informed the Aurora Chapter's commander that they had had no right to mark the Battle of Eucaria as a victory on their war banners, since the Emperor's Spears had actually carried out the operation that resulted in the defeat of the rebels. This led to a squabble between the two Astartes captains, 
which ended in an honor duel between both chapters' champions. Yet even this failed to stop the bickering, as the duel proved inconclusive, and both chapters claimed that they had won. Eventually, a shot rang out, and both sides attacked in an internecine battle, which resulted in even their orbiting fleets unleashing their weapons upon one another, and causing significant damage before a ceasefire was eventually declared to stem the losses. Since both chapters were ultramarine successors, the ultramarines dispatched a group of representatives to finally end the conflict. Upon further review, the ultramarines ruled in the Aurora chapter's favor and held that the Emperor's spears had acted impulsively. The ultramarines' arbitrators also found that the Emperor's spears had not followed the dictums laid out in the Codex Astartes. As a result, the credit for the victory over the rebels was to be shared equally between the two chapters. Though the Aurora chapter was satisfied with this decision, Tristance was infuriated at the outcome, and vowed he would never set foot on the Ultramarine's homeworld of Macrag again, even if the home of his Primarch found itself imperiled. The Emperor's Spears bitterly claimed the outcome was the result of the Ultramarine's cultural inflexibility as a chapter, and their expressed preference for the Aurora chapter as an organization that was more compliant with the dictates of the Codex Astartes than the Emperor's Spears. Thereafter, the Emperor's Spears no longer had a close or cordial relationship with their two brother chapters. War against the Exilarchy, Year 999, Millennium 41 The birth of the Great Rift cut off the region of Alaria's Vale from the wider Imperium trapping it within the darkness of the Imperium Nihilus. At that time, a great chaos warhost known as the Exilarchy came into being, comprised mainly of humans and mutants, but supported by a small number of heretic Astartes warbands. The true rulers of the Exilarchy were the chaos space marines known as the Pure, the remnants of the Star Scorpions chapter who had been declared lost in the warp. The Pure used the rest of the Exilarchy forces as foot soldiers to further their cause. In the aftermath of the Great Rift's creation, the Pure and the Exilarchy were expelled from their travels through the warp into Laria's Vale. The worlds of the Vale were part of the Emperor's domain, but the Pure sought to conquer them and reclaim the region they had once helped to defend in the name of the Dark Guards. This brought them into conflict with their former allies, the Emperor's Spears and Celestial Lion's chapters, who were charged with protecting the worlds of Laria's Vale. Due to the sheer numbers of the Exilarchy warhost, eventually half of the worlds of Laria's Vale fell to the Pure's control. The Emperor's Spears, the Celestial Lions, and the rest of the Adeptus Velari waged a slowly losing campaign against the forces of the Exilarchy. After over a Terran century of warfare, there was no longer any doubt that the Exilarchy and its heretic Astartes masters had the upper hand. Chapter Organization The Emperor's Spears diverged substantially from the organizational dictates of the Codex Astartes. They have a vast chapter fleet and specialize in air-to-ground warfare and orbital drop assaults. They are particularly mobile when it comes to deployment and redeployment, and are not short of air assets. The Emperor's Spears often ally with the military forces of the Adeptus Mechanicus and Scitari legions of the Forge Moon of Bellona in their own star system, and Imperial Knights from Rokama, a night world located in Alaria's Vale. The chapter is organized into what it calls war hosts, instead of the traditional companies. These are autonomous units that often range far from Nemeton in defense of Alara's Vale. The chapter master of the Emperor's Spears is known as the High King, while its captains are called war host lords. The chapter's first company is called the Paragons. These warriors forsake any chance to rise further in the chapter's hierarchy and it is believed that they must undergo blood rites and other hidden rituals to gain their elite position. On the battlefield, they are fierce hunters, focusing on the elimination of enemy leaders. Chapter specialists known as druids replace the usual librarians, chaplains, tech marines, and apothecaries of Codex-compliant chapters. These warrior priests are always ready to harvest the gene seed of their fallen battle brothers, as well as performing the traditional duties of the standard Codex roles, based on their specialist skills and esoteric abilities. 
Chapter Combat Doctrine Imperial tacticians have chronicled the Emperor's spears as exemplars of a close assault ideal. Via drop pod and gunship, the Emperor's spears descend into the heart of the enemy and hold position long enough for other Imperial forces to advance untroubled, linking up with their vanguard. Witnesses cite that Emperor Spears' warriors aren't the berserk madmen one might expect of tattooed savages, but instead wage war in bursts of adrenal fury tempered by periods of chanted tribal dirges. Their way of waging war is chimeric in that regard, as conflictingly melancholic and joyous as the barbarians of Nematon themselves. Imperial commanders have, in the past, accused the Emperor Spears of being unreliable, noting that the chapter expresses space marine autonomy to a difficult degree. Cries for aid are answered, but without always coordinating with the Imperial forces on the ground. The chapter has always made efforts to minimize collateral damage, but Emperor's spear strike forces have been known to plunge into battle, pitting glory above prudence, as if the chapter's youth meant its warriors had something to prove to its older brethren. Desperation in recent solar decades has forced the Emperor's spears into a more cooperative mindset, however. Necessity has forced their hand. With Alara's veil in such danger from their archenemy, pride can no longer come first. Now, survival must. Compared to many Space Marine chapters, the Emperor's spears are devastatingly well equipped for orbital and deep void warfare, primarily due to the scale of their fleet and their experience in grinding void warfare. On the same note, their alliance with the Forge world of Bellona means that all but the most distant war hosts possess abundant war machines, ammunition and material, as well as allied contingents of Adeptus Mechanicus soldiery clad in blown and red and black. Chapter Homeworld The homeworld of the Emperor's Spears is the ocean world of Nematon. Its land masses are small and mountainous and heavily forested. There are several equatorial land masses that are largely marshy jungle. Due to the temperate weather, rainfall is constant across most of the surface. The twelve tribes of Nematon represent a monoculture of interacting pre-industrial tribes who loosely share certain touchstones, including beliefs, cultural practices and language. As Alara's Vale is a nebula that takes up most of Nematon's night sky, the Nematese clans have come to believe that rain is something superstitious and sacred born from the great lights in the sky, a belief that is considered borderline heretical by many of the more conservative factions of the Imperium. The relationship between the chapter and Nematon's people is very different from that of most Space Marine chapters and their recruiting stock. The tribe see the Space Marines as the spirits of lost children, taking their young before their time and leaving them simply ghosts to be mourned. Nematom itself is a curiously well-defended world. A mighty minefield protects approaches to the planet, while many of the rocks that make up Nematon's rings have been turned into weapons platforms capable of bombarding attackers with waves of deadly torpedoes. Further defenses come from the tick priests of Bologna, a forged moon in the Nematon system. The Emperor Spears have formed close links with Bologna's leaders, and together they are the foremost defenders of Alara's Vale. Chapter Colors The Emperor Spears primarily wear sky-blue power armor with a white helm. This chapter does not display company numbers on its power armor, and it does not paint the trim of its shoulder plates to designate company. Squads are marked with Nemetes runes or Roman numerals on the shoulder pauldrons or greaves. Nemetes' runes look similar to Ogham, an early medieval runic alphabet used to write the early Irish language. Outsiders cannot penetrate the meaning of these specific symbols, but they are never used elsewhere in the Nemetes' tongue and do not seem to be numbers. Most warriors bear personal heraldry on one knee plate, which is painted in a deeper blue. This heraldry usually reflects a specific campaign the Battle Brother fought in, or the Manticora Bestia Fidelitas, a sigil representing the unity of the Adeptus Valeri. The Scitari of Bellona and allied Astro Militarum regiments often also bear this sigil. 
Many emperor's spears wear cloaks made from the hides of beasts they have hunted and slain on Nematon. Warriors of the emperor's spears' veteran first company, the Paragons, have the trident marking on their helms and white shoulder pauldrons, while maintaining the standard sky blue trim. A lot of Paragons also have the trident symbol tattooed on their faces in red or white ink. Officers from all companies may choose to paint one or both shoulder pauldrons white. Space Marines from the Emperor's Spears have also been known to wear trinkets, talismans, serpent scale hides and fur pelts. These are usually gifts from the Twelve Tribes of Nematon, not things the Astartes has hunted or made for themselves. These primitive fetishes are nowhere near as common as they are on the Space Wolves war gear, but appear very similar to those worn amongst the Space Marines of the Salamanders chapter. The most common ornamentation worn by the Emperor's Spears are Nemetes runes on their armor, which are usually black, silver, or white, either painted or carved into talismans. Each warhost marks their azure armor with a range of Nemetes Ogham runes that are believed to compromise a mix of unit markings on a sigils and other esoteric icons. The Emperor's Spears have codes of conduct that forbid them from becoming too filthy. Even in the middle of a campaign, they are forced to maintain their armor as well as they can, to respect its machine spirit and to intimidate the enemy, rather than looking battered and therefore weak. The Druids who take the place of librarians and apothecaries both wear black power armor, with Druidic and priestly elements adorning their battle plate. Druids who replace tech marines wear black as well, and they use the standard tech marine armor technology, but without the Druidic and priestly elements. Unusually, the Emperor Spears tech marines don't wear many symbols of Mars. Instead, they opt to display the icon of the nearby forge moon of Bellona, which takes the form of a halo, a half-cog, over a skull weeping blood. This is the same symbol used by the cult Mechanicus and Skitari legions of Bellona. The druids who serve as librarians, apothecaries, and tech marines have white helms, and the few that have served in the first company possess the red trident on their helm. The druids who take the place of chaplains wear the traditional black battle plate with bone white helms. Red tear trails are carefully applied to the skull mask's cheeks as if weeping. Any skulls that are displayed on their armor also have these same blood tears which represent some unknown meaning from Nemetes legends. Chapter Badge The Emperor's Spears Chapter Badge is a black trident pointed upward with a white skull centered upon it, all on a field of sky blue. End quote. I have been Baldemort, your faithful servant. If you are intent on gaining any figures, then do please consider getting a discount and using one of our affiliate links, as that helps us out at the guides. So a good deed while filling a need, so to put it. And do consider liking and subscribing. If you do, then please hit the notifications button, as I would not wish you to miss out. There is, of course, a Discord and merch link in the description as well. So, come join the party. And thank you for listening. Now, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.